Hi, this is Jamie Lyerly, and today we're going to do a process that I call Connected Collage. And it's the core part of my course called the Connected Creative. Um, so this process is an art collage that's done on cards so that you can do them very quickly and have a lot of fun doing them and have them completed. Um, I find it's one of the best ways to be able to get past perfectionism is to go ahead and create something that's very fast and easy um, and also can have meaning if you assign meaning to it or you can just have it for fun to be able to see what's coming up for you. So we're going to do a quick video and do one together um, and I hope that it inspires you to do your own. So I have a supply video but I'll tell you again what we have for supplies um, which is uh, I have Bristol board which is a 100, 100 pound Bristol board and it's just cut up into these minor five and a half or sorry five by seven and a half Bristol board and we have magazines my favorite is National Geographic we have paper cement rubber cement or glue stick some sort of something to glue it on there and scissors little extras if you want to use a frame to kind of frame the image to be able to see how how it'll fit on your card okay and I keep it all together in this little box that I got from Michael's um, so it makes it really easy to be able to store everything okay so if you want to come along with me if you have the supply list then let's go ahead and make a card together so what we do is we just take a magazine I'm just going to take this one right off the front um, and we just look for images that really leave the card up here. Um, ones that call to us. So just take a few moments. And we're going to move super fast. I say faster than the brain. So you're not thinking about. You're looking for basically three different pieces, which is a background, a foreground, and. Um, you know, in a middle ground if you want, you know, three different pieces. But you can always just look for what really calls to you. Like I just pulled this and this looks really awesome. You don't have to have a reason why, you just look at it. But right there I look at that and just think that would make an amazing background. And knowing that when you rip it out, even if you just spend a few minutes here doing that, it doesn't have to all come together exactly. So we'll just grab a few images, not thinking really too hard. But just kind of looking for, you know, those three pieces. So go ahead and just flip through. And I said we just we're looking to make connection with the image, whatever it is. So, and then you just rip it out. Okay. Oops, I ripped out two. That's okay. We'll use that for later. And keep going. And again, if you're finding yourself thinking too much, then um, move faster. Okay, and let's, I like this lady. That one's cool too, but we'll leave, we'll leave that. So that's about three images, but I'll just grab, see if there's anything else that wants to come out. Nope, not right now. Okay. So then we just put that aside, and then we just grab for this. Since I only ripped out a few images, we're just going to look and see what we want to frame here. So we can use the frame to be able to, if you cut something out there, you can use the frame to kind of see how they would piece together. Like I know that would be a background. This person, if I'm going to use her, I don't want to use her whole face. Um, I'm actually, actually, I'm not going to cut that. I'm just going to rip it. I am quite fond of ripping. And we just set it aside. So that looks totally different when it's ripped than when it was whole. I love being able to just um, take the images and pull out the parts that really resonate for me. And then we are, we're just looking for a connection, a relationship between the images. And it doesn't have to be perfect. 
So you can rip it out, you can cut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut something. And for the perfectionists out there, this whole cutting thing can get really stressful. And I want to um, advise you to breathe and really allow the image itself to come out. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to stay within the frame. Like I really like the way the edges look sometimes when I just rip it. So we just leave it in there and we just see how that looks. And knowing that whatever comes out, sometimes one of my favorite things to do, um, again, I'll just a little more advanced, but it's like, is removing, you know, removing part of the image. You were drawn to the image, but it doesn't mean the image actually has to be whole. So I like to kind of cut some of the image away and remove it. Or flap it over each other. Great. Awesome. So I like what that's what's happening right there. And I'm going to take and just start the process of gluing it down. We'll see what happens here. So you take your glue. And again, you didn't see a whole lot of sinking happening. I'm running out of glue. Let's try this one. <laughs> so one thing, you get into this process and you're going to want to get a lot of glue. So I just glue it down. You see me, I just kind of, I put down this right here is, is just um, is paper so that I can get glue on it. Uh, I use paper bags and I just cover my space with paper bags. So then gluing all the way to the edges. I have a fan on right now so it actually tries to uh, dry the glue a little faster than I like it. Okay. And so as I was looking through these images too, I didn't note until telling you now. Um, see there's some words here down the bottom. During this type of connected collage, you don't want to use words because it just really breaks up um, the image. How do I put it here? Words bring your uh, work a different part of your brain than images do. And so I like to make sure when I when I make connected collage, um, I don't include words at all because um, because I think words bring you into a different space. Okay. So since we're going to flip this kind of around, I'm going to again, you know, like the way that I laid it out when I was laying there is not, you know. To me, it's not an exact science, especially when I'm just playing around and trying some things out. So we just kind of slop some glue down. And then we see how I put her before. See how I have glue kind of to the side there? I just use my finger and kind of wipe it off. Um, but it's rubber cement too, so the fact that like when it's done, you can take and get rid of it from there. So then we have this image here and so we will, you see how I'm not cutting around the edges or anything, um, you know, trying to be perfect. I'm just going to put it down and allow it to speak to me. So we glue it down. It doesn't have to be perfect from the way we put it. Cover her, put a little on her eye there. So yeah. Oops. And you can see with the rubber cement, you can kind of pick it up a little bit, which I like about that. So it's not. It's again, it's a very for. It's very forgiving. Um, and knowing that if you don't put enough glue on there later, you can just add more to it later. Okay. So we smooth that down. Awesome. And so usually I like to take to let it dry for, um, for a little bit before I cut it, but since we're doing this for the demo, I want to show you what, what it looks like when it's cut out. So then I flip it over and I just cut around the edges there because I like to be surprised of what exactly it looks like. And I usually like, I like to leave this speckled edge sometimes just for fun. Um, this ripped out edge. So sometimes I'll cut them completely clean to kind of see how it works on there. So again, you see my cards, they're already like not really cut up 
super perfect because they're just for me, just for fun. Okay, and so now we see the cards. And this is what we have. So there we go. So that's how you make a connected collage card. And so I offer for you to be able to just make them and see how what comes up for you. Um, knowing that we have, you know, lots of people who are trying this method out um, and allow it, you know, the next step that we do for this is like we've already created to it, created it. And so the next step that I want to show you in the process is you take a journal and you've created it and and you can just take um, and what I say, you know, connect with it. There's two questions that I like to ask the card, which is the first thing that I like to ask is who are you? Um, and then the next question that I like to ask it is, what is your gift to me? And so those particular questions that I use of who are you, what, what are your, what's your gift to me, I'll write those down when I make connection with it. Okay? And then I offer for you that you just continue, you know, to make cards and allowing them to speak to you um, and gather them up. And then you have a whole collection of them after you're done and then they have they have all kinds of meanings that mean something to you so good luck and i look forward to seeing what kind of card you make if you want to connect in with me um, i'll have my information below and so this is jamie from the, Con the connected creative have a wonderful time creating <laughs>